Now on 4 News Now at 6, the teen accused of planning to attack multiple Coeur d'Alene churches pleads not guilty when he could stand trial and the role the Coeur d'Alene school played in the investigation. The clouds are moving in. I'll let you know if that means our warm spring weather will be coming to an end in your first alert forecast. And a push to remove forever chemicals from America's water supply. We explain the EPA's new guidelines and how many water systems across Washington have the chemicals. You're watching 4 News Now at 6. We begin with breaking news. Accused quadruple murder suspect back in court tonight as his lawyers and the state battle over a phone survey of 400 people in Lake Talk County conducted by the defense. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Kirsten O'Connor. And I'm Derek Dice. The prosecutor argued the questions in the survey could make it difficult to find an impartial jury in the county, saying the questions could give people information about the case they previously did not know. The defense arguing the survey is necessary to find out if an impartial jury can be found in Latah County or if the trial needs to be moved. The doctor who conducted the survey took the stand and explained the methodology of the survey and how it helps determine if unbiased jurors can be found. The hearing still ongoing, but the judge said he does not plan on making a ruling on the survey or a possible change of venue tonight. This is still a developing story and we will update you as we learn more. Well, Alexander Mercurio, the 18-year-old Coeur d'Alene man accused of allegedly pledging his allegiance to ISIS and attempting to provide resources to the terrorist group, has pleaded not guilty. Today was Mercurio's first appearance in front of a judge. He also denied his criminal forfeiture allegation. Marissa Rio was in the courtroom today and has the very latest. Mercurio walked into the courtroom today wearing a red and white striped jail issued jumpsuit. He also had handcuffs on, but those were taken off before he sat down with his attorney. Now Mercurio was quiet for the most part in court today, only saying a few words like yes and no. Both the state and judge joined the hearing virtually. An affidavit reveals the FBI had been investigating Mercurio for over a year back when he was still 17. They were monitoring alleged conversations he was having on a school issued laptop. Coeur d'Alene Public Schools confirmed with 4 News Now Mercurio was an online student at Lake City High at the time and he was in fact issued a Chromebook. In an email saying, all electronic devices we issue to students have controls in place to manage their internet access. These controls include internet filters that block inappropriate content as required by state and federal law. The affidavit states the FBI found files confirming Mercurio's commitment to ISIS and its ideology. The Coeur d'Alene School District told 4 News Now they were aware of this investigation, saying via email, in late 2022-2023, the FBI asked the district for information related to Mr. Mercurio's online activity. The district cooperated fully with the FBI as they conducted their investigation. According to court documents, at the beginning of this year, Mercurio allegedly discussed his plans to brutally attack local churches in the area. Area. The FBI arrested him on Saturday, the day before he was allegedly planning to go through with his attack. Mercurio was escorted out of the courtroom in handcuffs. He faces a maximum sentence of 20 years in prison if he is convicted. Jury trial is set for May 28th here in Coeur d'Alene. We will continue to update you with any new information as soon as it becomes available. Reporting in Coeur d'Alene, Marissa Rio, 4 News Now. Well, the sun felt nice today, but it seems like clouds are in our forecast. <laughs> mm -hmm. The big question is, does that mean the temperatures are going to drop as well? Let's send it over to Chris Crocker to find out more. Uh, we are going to keep the warm weather, but we are losing the sunshine. Here are four things to know about your forecast. Clouds are increasing tonight. Possibility of some showers in North Idaho tomorrow around the rest of the region we have a chance of rain on Friday but a very slight chance there's a warming trend in our forecast it's going to head us into a gorgeous weekend. Here's a look at our live view from 500 West Boone Avenue right now, and the skies are becoming increasingly opaque as the high and mid-level clouds filter our late day sunshine. We're looking to the southwest over the Spokane Veterans Memorial Arena. Satellite confirms what we see from the ground as the clouds are continuing to increase, but nothing coming out of these clouds tonight. We are gonna be staying dry with mostly cloudy conditions those clouds are going to help keep our temperatures a little bit warmer. We'll be staying well above freezing overnight, 38 degrees to start the day on Thursday. 
Mostly cloudy skies tomorrow. Even so, a high temperature of 60 degrees. 55 is our average high. I'll be back in just a few minutes to show you where we might see a little bit of rain late Thursday and Friday and let you know how warm it is going to get for the weekend. Here. All right, Chris, thank you. Well, new details tonight about a North Idaho surgeon accused of recording his employees in a staff bathroom without their knowledge. We now know he's accused of recording people in his home as well, including nine children who had no idea they were being recorded. Dr. Spencer Greendike faces eight felony charges of video voyeurism and sexual exploitation of a child. Prosecutors say he recorded in the bathroom at his practice and also mentioned they have evidence from his Post Falls home. Now several of those employees and their families are suing Green Dyke, saying he caused them irreparable emotional and financial harm. The civil lawsuit mentions the recording at Green Dyke's practice, which now says it's closed due to an emergency. The lawsuit says the recording started in 2005 and says employees and their families also visited Green Dyke's home, where they and their children were recorded in areas that should have been private. The lawsuit alleges Green Dyke did this for his own sexual gratification. And we did check tonight. Green Dyke is still in the Kootenai County Jail. His attorney told the judge this week Green Dyke's only asset is his $3.5 million home and he can't post his $1.5 million bond and still pay his employees and his defense team. We've been on top of the story all week and we'll continue to follow the newest developments. You can read our coverage in more detail on KXLY.com. High capacity magazines could soon be returning to store shelves in Washington. A Cowlitz County Superior Court judge recently ruled the state's ban on magazines with more than 10 rounds of ammo is unconstitutional. Supporters say banning high capacity magazines would save lives during mass shootings because it would force the shooter to stop and reload more frequently. Critics argue it violates the Second Amendment. The attorney general quickly filed an emergency appeal with the state Supreme Court to keep the law in effect while the case plays out in court. Construction season is in full swing across the inland northwest. Starting next week, another major project will begin in North Spokane. Starting Monday, East Euclid Avenue between North Market and Ralph will be closed as crews rebuild the roadway under the newly constructed North-South Corridor overpass. Drivers will have to drive up Wellesley to avoid the construction, and the road is expected to reopen May 31st. The Biden administration wants to lower the amount of chemicals found in drinking water. Coming up, how long the Department of Health says it could take to improve the water supply here in Washington. And a new study suggests multiple social issues are preventing a large number of women from getting their mammograms. Coming up, what experts say needs to change to improve access to this potentially life-saving screening. Connect with 4 News Now on KXLY+. Plus. It's a new season from New York. Watch Kelly weekdays at 4. Rugged, capable off-road travel, adept at towing heavy loads, the completely redesigned Nissan Pathfinder has all the features buyers are looking for in a full-size SUV. Check these features. Seating up to 8 with easy access third row, cabin noise reduction, super smooth 9-speed transmission, towing up to 6,000 pounds with 284 horsepower, classy upscale design, and two-tone style. There's lots more with this Pathfinder. Find out at Coeur d'Alene Nissan, just off Highway 95. Take advantage of the tax credits you can, including the annual Washington State Working Families Tax Credit. You can get money back on state taxes already paid. Visit workingfamiliescredit.wa.gov. Fresh Soul brings Southern-inspired recipes to life. The nonprofit restaurant educates students through a diverse job training program. In just 12 weeks, we teach the kids everything they need to know about food prep, how to cook, and uh, proper etiquette skills. This experience empowers youth to be successful upon completion of this program. Fresh Soul, get these kids experience for the real world. New America Credit Union is honored to donate $1,000 to Fresh Soul. This is how New America cares for kids. For 10 years, the Fort News Now Extreme Team has been rebuilding and rejuvenating baseball fields. Is yours next? It's that time again. Go to KXOI.com and tell us why your field needs a makeover. Diamonds and Dreams brought to you by your hometown Chevy dealers and Horizon Credit Union.
Yeah, I'm a little over my head here. We can certainly take care of that for you. When you're looking for a company that's noteworthy, look no further. Call your friends at Mainstream Electric Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing and spend your time doing more important things. Next ET. You're going to get it. Halle Berry, Kevin Costner, Chris Hemsworth are exclusive with the CinemaCon stars in Las Vegas. Plus, our Bon Jovi exclusive, Next ET. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Entertainment Tonight at 7.30. This is going to be delicious. Tomorrow, GME's in search of America's best comfort food. From sweets to burgers, tacos, fried chicken, mac and cheese. Oh, my mouth's watering just reading this promo. Will we be at your favorite comfort food spot? It's one tasty week on GMA. Potential changes are coming to your drinking water. The EPA is rolling out a new national standard for drinking water, limiting the amount of PFAS, or forever chemicals, found in the water supply. These chemicals have been connected to multiple health issues, including increased cancer risk. ABC's Jacqueline Lee explains how long these changes could take to enact. In a major announcement Wednesday, the Environmental Protection Agency is providing a first-ever national standard for the presence of so-called forever chemicals in drinking water, a move they say will protect about 100 million people. This rule really is a breakout from where we've been for decades. Finally, we're seeing government start to take the PFAS crisis seriously. Commonly known as PFAS, the EPA is limiting six types of these substances. The chemicals are commonly found in items like fire extinguishing foam, food packaging, and dental floss. Since the chemicals break down very slowly, it can build up in people, animals, and the environment over time and lead to an increase in cholesterol, changes in liver enzymes, and pregnancy complications, according to the CDC. We're starting with this six um, because with this six, we have the best, best science and data uh, to design uh, these health standards. So what EPA is doing is we're measuring twice and we're cutting once. Uh, this is the first of six and we're going to continue until we get to all of them. Water systems will now have three years to monitor for these chemicals and then two years to implement new technology to reduce their levels, according to the EPA. One billion dollars in funding from the bipartisan infrastructure law will help states with water testing and treatment. Everyone should be able to turn on the tap and know that the glass of water they fill is safe to drink and free of pollutants that harm people's health and well-being. The American Chemistry Council released a statement last summer criticizing the plan, stating the EPA analysis was flawed and underestimated the cost of compliance for water systems. The EPA estimates between 6 and 10 percent of the 66,000 public drinking water systems will have to take action to meet the new drinking water standard. Jacqueline Lee, ABC News, Los Angeles. And the Washington Department of Health announced it will move forward to adopt the EPA's new regulations for PFAS in drinking water systems. Peter Choi is in studio tonight and explains what this could mean for drinking water in Washington. Yeah, Kirsten, the EPA announced a new maximum contaminant levels. MCL is the highest level of contaminant that is allowed in drinking water. Now tonight, the state health department says it welcomes the new federal regulations. Under the state action levels adopted in 2021, more than 2,400 public water systems are required to test for PFAS in drinking water by 2025. The state health department says so far, 30 public water systems have, have detected PFAS levels greater than the state levels. However, private wells in the West Plains neighborhood are not included. Now, the state health department says that the EPA's new regulations are more strict and protective to human health does provide a level of certainty for our water systems and for people that may be impacted um, across a wide array of regulations and programs where MCLs are used. Now the next plan is the health department says it needs to discuss with the Washington State Board of Health whether they will adopt the new regulation, federal regulations. The department says this process can take up up to two years. In the meantime, public water systems still have to finish sampling under the state's existing levels. Now the question is, what should we do if PFAS has found it in my drinking water? The health department says take action immediately. Contact public water systems. For private wells, consider installing certified water filters. In studio tonight, Peter Choi, 4 News Now.
Thank you, Peter. Well, we have a weekend to look forward to. High temperatures in the mid 60s, about 10 degrees above average with blue skies and sunshine overnight lows in the 40s. Now, between now and then, we do have the chance of some showers. I'll show you the computer model, let you know where you might see the rain after the break. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Post Falls Volkswagen. For over 30 years, we've been keeping you warm. Or cool, but now we are taking you to the next level of innovation. Fireplaces, sleek modern design, or traditional electric, efficient and trendy. Lighting, permanent decorative year-long lighting providing security as well as beauty. These are just some of the ideas we are bringing to you for the next level at Holiday Heating, Cooling and Electric. We call it Holiday Innovation. Call us today. At Just Between Friends, you'll find everything you need for your family. It's all here. I've been shopping in JBF since my kids were little, and we just love it. It's the one-stop shop for everything that you need for your kids and your grandkids. I'm a first-time mom. I got a lot of clothing, shoes. I got a changing table. It's been a lot of fun. Such a blessing to be able to shop, sell, and save at JBF. This has been a game-changer for our family. Just Between Friends at the Kootenai County Fairgrounds this weekend. Have you worked or enjoyed the outdoors in Lincoln County before 2014? You may have been exposed to harmful Libby Amphibole asbestos. Get your free asbestos health screening today. Don't wait. Early detection is key. Contact the CARD Clinic at LibbyAsbestos.org. There it is. That feeling you get when you can do more with less asthma. It starts with Dupixent. Dupixent is not for sudden breathing problems. It's an add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma and can help improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks. Dupixent helps prevent asthma attacks and can even reduce or eliminate oral steroids. Can you picture it? Dupixent can cause allergic reactions that can be severe. Get help right away if you have rash, chest pain, worsening shortness of breath, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor about newer worsening joint aches and pain or a parasitic infection. Don't change or stop asthma medicines, including steroids, without talking to your doctor. Who knows what you can do when you do more with less asthma? Ask your doctor about Dupixent, the most prescribed biologic for asthma. You may have seen this on social media today. It is National Siblings <laughs> Day. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, we were all sharing about our siblings and we wanted to take some time on TV and tell you about ours. Yeah, and I guess I get to lead things <laughs> off here. So this is a pic of me and my two brothers. That's Desmond in the middle and Devin on the right there. Devin lives in Wenatchee. Desmond yeah. lives in London. So this is actually yeah. the last time I saw him six years ago, uh, Easter 2018. Wow. I didn't know you had a brother in London. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, well, I have, there's five of us uh, mm. in my family. Um, this and your was, cute little mom in there. And my mom, <laughs> yes. I don't know why, how everyone else ended up with gray hair but me. Isn't that funny? <laughs> um, yes, the youngest of five. And this was at my mother's 90th birthday last summer uh, in Idaho Falls. All of our names start with K. Oh, yeah. see, we're all Ds. Oh. Yeah, I noticed that about the two of you. That was <laughs> so sweet. Hey, um, I love that picture of your mom, by the way, Chris. Oh, she's so sweet. These are my siblings, my brother and sister. Uh, my brother is Kyle, Aww. also Kay. And then Renee is the graduate there. So that's why I know Zot, Zot, Zot. Mm -hmm. She went to UC Irvine. The anteaters. The anteaters. It's and a strange mascot. Are extra smart, aren't they? Oh, Just yes. Just like you. Yes, computer science engineering and... Uh, yeah, my sister's studying to be an art therapist. Where did we all go wrong? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, that, that was fun. Yeah, and uh, that, that's on our, the Facebook page yeah. at KXLY. You can see all our people's siblings. And I would like to, we'd like to see your siblings. So put the picture on there, would ya? Uh, let's take a look at our high temperature today. 58, just a little above average. 
We started the day off at 32 degrees. First time we've hit freezing in a while. We are going to be above freezing through the seven day forecast. Just another reminder that it's a little early to plant despite the temptations. Our average high is 55. Average overnight low is 36, but our records for overnight lows deep into the 20s. So again, Mother's Day, that is the rule of thumb. 734 is our sunset time. We do have the clouds moving in. Here's our forecast radar. We're going to start the day off with mostly cloudy skies, and those clouds are going to be with us all day Thursday. With a southerly flow, though, our temperature should still be up around 60 degrees. Here's Thursday at 5 o'clock with just a few hit and miss showers starting to show up. But we're going to be looking to the south from the Palouse through the central panhandle as we get into Thursday night for some showers streaming up there. Here's midnight tomorrow. And then as we get into the day on Friday, we'll continue to see that wet weather streaming into the Palouse. Here's 7 a.m. on Friday and may reach into Spokane and Coeur d'Alene Friday afternoon before we clear out Friday night. And once we clear out, we're going to keep that sunshine going through the weekend. The precipitation that we do receive over the next 48 hours is going to be uh, fairly insignificant for most of the region. We'll just be in the hundreds of an inch, may not see anything other than a sprinkle in Moses Lake and Ritzville, if that. A better chance for some measurable, meaningful rain for Lewiston, Pullman, and then up through the central panhandle. Well, four hundredths of an inch in Kellogg. Nothing to write home about, but we are going to get some rain. Here is our chance of measurable rain over the next five days in Spokane. It's only 20% on Friday. Then it's zero through the weekend, up to 20% on Monday, and that is that system on Monday is going to come along with a drop in temperatures and a little bit better chance of rain going into the middle of next week. Meanwhile, with the clouds moving in, it will not be as cold tomorrow morning. Temperatures in the upper 30s in many locations. Thursday's highs in the 50s and 60s, a lot of 60s on the map, and 70 down in Lewiston. The weekend sunny and mid 60s then the changes come in monday a windy day with a 20 percent chance of showers a better chance of rain monday night into tuesday and a more significant drop in temperatures we're down below average but not for long we'll be warming right back up again in the middle of next week i've got some wildlife wednesday photos for you in the next half hour kirsten thank you chris well it is the second most common cancer in u.s women about 240 thousand cases of breast cancer in women were diagnosed in 2020. But the CDC says regular mammograms are the best way to find the disease early, but a new study reveals women are facing many barriers in getting this potentially life-saving screening. CNN's Mandy Gaither explains what experts say needs to happen to ensure health care for all. It's an important weapon in the war against breast cancer. Mammograms can help detect signs of the disease earlier when it's more easily treated. But a new CDC study reveals many women still find it difficult to get this recommended screening. Those of us who have been working in this space have known that these barriers exist. We've known this for years. The U.S. Preventive Services Task Force recommends mammograms every two years for women ages 50 to 74. But researchers say only about 66% of women in that age group get a mammogram if they have three or more health-related social needs. Those can include food insecurity, feeling socially isolated, lack of reliable transportation, lost employment, or a reduction in hours. The cost of accessing health care was the biggest barrier. Year. Institutions need to be aware that they have to ask about these social terms of health. And if you ask, then you can have a plan in place to address the needs. Electra Paskett, director of the Center for Cancer Health Equity at Ohio State's Comprehensive Cancer Center, says health care providers need to do barrier assessments in order to identify things like financial issues that may stop people from getting mammograms and find solutions to address them. I'm a three-time breast cancer survivor. My first cancer was diagnosed 27 years ago on a mammogram. It was extremely small, the size of my pinky, top of my pinky, and I'm still here. So mammography works. For Health Minute, I'm Andy Gaither. 
Well, the CDC says mammograms are available at no cost to the patient through most private health insurance plans and Medicare. And people who do not have insurance can access free or low-cost breast and cervical cancer screening services through the CDC's National Breast and Cervical Cancer Early Detection Program. Well, one local group wants lawmakers to do more to protect kids online. The changes one man wants to see made after losing his son to mental illness. And one of Coeur d'Alene's oldest buildings could be torn down. Why the owners say they are selling and what could take the historic building's place. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Catch all the action at Caesar Sportsbook, located inside Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino, the area's largest sportsbook. Bet your favorite games live as they happen with in-play betting, or place bets ahead of time with the Bet Ahead feature, only at Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. You just win here. So what do you think about these? Yeah, we're gonna take... From design and products to removal and installation, we handle the entire process to create a beautiful and functional bathroom for whatever your life needs. Rebath, with you every step of the way. Don't relocate, renovate. As your needs change, update your bathroom with aging and accessibility solutions designed to keep the space safe and stylish. Call us or visit rebath.com and save $1,500 off your complete bathroom remodel. We're going to level with you. We had a bit of an incident here at the store. Now we're in the process of some repairs. And while we rebuild, we thought we'd have a construction sale and I think we're nailing it. We've lowered prices on all our inventory, including our best sellers in dining room, living room, and bedroom. Looking for a new recliner or sectional? You know we always guarantee the lowest Lazy Boy prices. We aren't screwing around with this sale, and you don't want to miss it. Kerner Furniture's construction sale is going on now. Kerner Furniture. Nice store. Low prices. When I was told I had a brain tumor, my life disappeared in a moment. I feared for my future, but even more... I feared for the ones I love. How would they move on without me? But when my doctor told me about the Gamma Knife of Spokane, everything changed. I can get my brain tumor treated in just one day and continue living the life I love. Because of Gamma Knife, I have hope. On right now for a limited time get 1.9 percent financing for 72 months on select f-150s wendell ford at the y on north division drive for generations Catch all the action at Caesar Sportsbook, located inside Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino, the area's largest sportsbook. Bet your favorite games live as they happen with in-play betting, or place bets ahead of time with the Bet Ahead feature, only at Spokane Tribe Resort and Casino. You just win here. 4 News Now is brought to you by PAR, your total home building source. Well, tonight, one of Coeur d'Alene's oldest buildings could be in its final chapter. The Roosevelt Inn, the city's oldest school building, is now a hotel, or now a hotel, is now listed for sale. And it already has an offer. The buyer, a townhome developer in western Washington. If sold, it's likely this building would be torn down and the land repurposed for townhomes. Jordan Smith visited the building today and has the story from Coeur d'Alene. Well, the owners of this historic building tell me they're ready for retirement. They're ready to move on, and ideally they would like to pass the torch along to someone who might be able to continue the hard work that they've done for nearly 25 years. But this property is valued at $3 million. It's not an easy purchase to make, and their number one prospective buyer happens to be a developer. Inside the Roosevelt Inn, it's easy to get lost in time. The 119-year-old building is Coeur d'Alene's oldest schoolhouse, where one of the owners actually attended grade school. I was born and raised in Coeur d'Alene, and me and all of my siblings went to school here. John and Tina transformed the building into a picturesque venue for weddings or proms, and an unforgettable stay as an old-fashioned bed and breakfast. They've been doing it for nearly 25 years, but now they're ready for a break. It's time to just start the next chapter of life. Yeah, which is retirement. As any small business owner knows, it's a constant effort. The never-ending work consumes a lot of their free time, and they're never able to fully step away. They've been trying to sell for years. Twice now they've been to the day of closing, but the deals have fallen through. They've tried to find the perfect buyer to continue the legacy of this building, 
But this is their seventh offer to buy the hotel, and they're hoping it's the final one. Their potential buyer? A townhome developer from Western Washington who will likely demolish the building and bring in new housing. It prompted outcry in Coeur d'Alene to save the building, but John tells me buyers hoping to preserve it have been tough to come by. If anybody wanted to really step up and save the place, show us the money and do it. It appears the building is entering its final chapter. The schoolhouse's 119 year run, certainly one for the books. In Coeur d'Alene, Jordan Smith, 4 News Now. The city's parks department wants to update the High Bridge dog park here, what the improvements are and why the dog owners say they welcome this proposal. That's coming up. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Home. It's both a place and a feeling. At yours, you strive to make new memories, create traditions, share stories, find the fun, Embrace the surprises and celebrate moments big and small. Memories are made at home, in every room, in every moment. Make your house feel like home at the Tin Roof. UFCW 2000 is building a union that fights to make sure that essential workers get better wages, respect on the job, and a safe workplace. Our union believes it's time for the employers to do the right thing and provide the kind of wages, benefits, and schedules that improve both employee services and company commitment. It's a win-win. The company has skilled workers long-term and it strengthens families and the community they live, shop, and work in. And isn't that what every American worker deserves? Hey Ben, the thermostat's acting up. You work for Bill's Heating and Air. You know how to fix this, right? I just do their commercials. Ben, the AC's broken. Come on, you work for Bill's. You must know something about this. Bro, I'm just their spokesperson. Dude, the furnace is so loud. You work for Bill's Heating. You can fix it, right? You do know I'm a basketball player, right? Bill's Heating and AC is offering financing as low as 0% for five years. Call today. For all your heating and cooling needs, leave it to the real professionals at Bill's. My name is Megan, and I've been a member of Canopy Credit Union since I was four. With Canopy, they, they have a whole team who's there to help guide you if you have questions. That's huge. It's so nice to know that you can get an answer to your questions. I have never had an issue that wasn't able to be resolved in a super friendly, helpful manner. It's so wonderful. I honestly don't think I'd ever leave. After all the women sucker punched on the streets, the boom in self-defense classes. Next, Inside Edition, the steps they're taking to make sure it doesn't happen to them. Then, the TV chef whose wife claims he ghosted her. She says he's walked out to start a new life without her and the kids. Watch the next Inside Edition. Watch 4 News Now at 6 and Inside Edition at 7. Live from downtown Spokane, this is 4 News Now at 6.30. My child, like so many others, was a victim and is a victim of social media and the algorithm which preyed upon his curiosity and eagerness to engage with others like him. Taj Jensen lost his son in 2022, a nightmare no parent should ever have to go through. And since then, Taj, along with other community leaders, are demanding a change in our social media policies to ensure our kids' safety. Hunter Bertram shares the message Taj wants every parent to hear. Life has ups and downs, but for kids growing up with the dangers of social media, it turns deadly far too often. We lost our son Tanner on August 27th, 20. 22. A goofy, awkward, intelligent kid and a standout high school lacrosse player are all words his dad memorialized Tanner in. He had a future that leaned towards public service in our military, but it all came to an end that summer day of 2022. His smile was infectious and no matter where he went, he was bound to make friends. His aura energy was infectious. However, we will never be able to witness the impact he may have had on others as he grew into a man due to social media. It's a growing concern that in today's world, it's becoming harder and harder to protect our kids online. What they're seeing, what they're being fed in such a vulnerable time of their brain development 
is causing big issues that people aren't realizing are issues until it's kind of too late. Courtney, a mom of six, told me no matter what she does, her teenager finds a way online and falls into the trap of social media addiction. They promote addictive use that is taking its toll on our children's mental and physical health. It's time to hold these social media companies accountable. Legislation has been demanded by numerous community leaders for several months. Finally, after a five-month wait, Congresswoman Kathy McMorris-Rogers announced on Tuesday evening an upcoming hearing on legislative solutions to protect our kids online. We applaud the House for taking a step forward yesterday to introduce their version of the COSA bill. And we call on Representative McMorris Rogers to quickly move the Kids Online, Online Safety Act forward. Their demand? Quickly make this a law so families like Taj and his wife do not have to go through the pain of losing a kid to social media. Part of what Congresswoman McMorris Rogers will be presenting to Congress next week is suggestions on age ID verification online, more consumers say on targeted algorithms, and other strict measures to enable more security and safety for our kids. In studio tonight, Hunter Bertram, 4 News Now. Thank you, Hunter. Live look over downtown Spokane right now. A little bit gray, uh, not the prettiest evening after a gorgeous sunny day. The clouds are increasing. Here's the view in Sandpoint right now, US 2 and Boyer. And we're starting to see those uh, bright blue skies shrouded in a veil of thin, high and mid-level clouds, and those will only increase as we get into the day tomorrow. Four things to know about your weather. There is the possibility of some isolated showers tomorrow in North Idaho. More likely, those will hold off until Thursday night and Friday. A warming trend that will take us into the mid-60s for a beautiful weekend. Here, meanwhile, is a live picture from downtown Spokane, and you can see those clouds moving in from the west getting thicker and thicker. The view from space showing a similar scenario. Those clouds are going to keep our temperatures a little bit warmer than they were this morning. We did get down to freezing in Spokane. Tonight will be in the mid to upper 30s around the region. Overcast conditions on Thursday, but no rain coming out of those clouds in Spokane. High temperature of 60 degrees compares to an average high of 55. I will be back with some sunshine for the weekend and some Wildlife Wednesday photos. Derek. All right, Chris. Well, a major upgrade could soon be coming to one of Spokane's popular dog parks. The High Bridge Dog Park near South Government Way in West Spokane has been a spot for illegal garbage dumping and drug activities. The Spokane Parks Department says it's time for a change. Peter Choi explains what safety improvements could be in place for park users. Dog owners here tell me they feel unsafe using this dog park, especially when it's dark outside. And they say safety improvements are much necessary for the whole community. It's a place for your afternoon walk or a playground for your furry friends to go crazy. So this has been like an amazing place to be able to take my dogs and socialize. Not so amazing when you have to deal with unsafe situations. Um, I feel really uncomfortable because I may just be the only one here. There's other openings up uh, uh, on the top, so there might be people here that I don't know. For others, it means taking extra safety precautions. I don't really like to bring any valuables in my car, you know, just out of caution. The city's parks department says the safety is a top priority. So we're, we would like to apply some what we call SEPTED, crime prevention through environmental design principles to this project. Uh, that's through the addition of lighting, through the addition of some selective tree thinning, pruning, um, some fire management there as well to open up those views. He says he wants to ensure parking space is safe too. By constructing a proper entrance to that facility, constructing a proper entryway, a proper parking lot, proper sidewalk, the construction will start this summer is expected to complete by this fall. This is a safe place for people to go to, and I would really appreciate if it stays a safe place. Now there's a public meeting about Highbridge Dog Park tomorrow, and find more information on our website, kxly.com. In Spokane tonight, Peter Choi, Furnish Now. 
Well, around the Northwest, Boeing is responding to claims made by a new whistleblower who says engineering issues with the company's 787 Dreamliners could cause the planes to break apart after decades of use. Sam Salapore claims parts of the fuselage are fastened together improperly, but he's not provided any documented evidence of this. Boeing has fired back, saying the issues raised have been subject to rigorous engineering examination under FAA oversight. This analysis has validated that these issues do not present any safety concerns. I'm doing this not because I want Boeing to fail, but because I want I want it to succeed and prevent the uh, crashes from happening. In 2021 and 2022, Boeing slowed production and stopped delivering 787s because of these concerns. It later said it addressed the issue and the FAA signed off, resuming deliveries in 2022. Salapor is expected to testify next week on Capitol Hill. Last month, a different whistleblower was found dead in South Carolina from what authorities said was an apparent suicide. The Seattle Seahawks began their off-season training this week. How the guys are adjusting to new head coach Mike McDonald. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. 4 News Now is brought to you by Coeur d'Alene Nissan. We're the easiest way to shop for floors. And going on now is our Carpet One Teal Tag Sale, where you can save up to $1,000 on new floors. Special financing is available. Panhandle Carpet One Floor and Home, West Appleway Avenue. I felt like there was just no answers to get out of the anxiety and the depression that I had. I was suicidal all the time, thinking about it nonstop, every day, every moment. Depression and anxiety rob millions of us of our day-to-day -day lives, but nothing seems to pull you out of it. Introducing Neurostim TMS, Washington's leading provider of transcranial magnetic stimulation, or TMS therapy. At Neurostim TMS, we treat the root of the problem with a series of short daily treatments. Using a non-invasive magnetic field, TMS activates the natural function of the brain's neurotransmitters to improve mood and regulate emotion. TMS is not shock therapy. It's an FDA-approved, easy outpatient experience and covered by all major medical insurances. There's nothing better than just being able to enjoy life again. The treatment just completely, fundamentally changed my life. Visit NeurostimTMS.com today or call to schedule your free consultation at any of our 12 Washington State locations. For over 90 years, the McVeigh Brothers family has been installing the very best in roofing, siding, and windows made for the Inland Northwest. Last year, our 6,000 series Coeur d'Alene windows earned the 2024 Energy Star Most Efficient Award, beating some manufacturers by 20%. So this week, we're celebrating by matching your energy rebate up to $10 per square foot with every window sold. At McVeigh Brothers, we're always working for you. Introducing the Chevy family of SUVs. Do more with tech. Do more with safety. Do more with style. The Chevy family of SUVs. There's one for everything you do. Get 1.9% financing on select popular Chevy SUVs when you finance with GM Financial. See your hometown Chevy dealer today. We're the easiest way to shop for floors, and going on now is our Carpet One Teal Tag Sale, where you can save up to $1,000 on new floors. Special financing is available. Panhandle Carpet One Floor and Home, West Appleway Avenue. Oh my goodness, what a bright future we have with second grade classes like this one. This is Mrs. Hazelton's second grade class at Winton Elementary in Coeur d'Alene. I had the tremendous pleasure of visiting with these students today, talking about the weather. They already knew a lot about <laughs> the weather. They've been uh, studying hard. Mrs. Hazelton was teacher of the month mm -hmm. and um, just a bright, beautiful school. I loved it. You said they were very attentive too when you came in. 
Yes, they were. I don't know where. Yes, I came in. I'm like, are you are you sure you're second what, graders? What did they threaten you to Amazing be? Amazing what those elementary teachers can do, right? Oh, to get them to stay in line. Must be working magic because they, yeah, they were delightful. And um, I bet they're gonna, if they're watching, would like to see some wildlife photos. So let's uh, do some wildlife Wednesday. And it's a fabulous time of year, you know. Uh, the osprey are back. They are building nests. They are laying eggs. They are getting ready to uh, sit on those nests. And Larry Crumpleman shared this photo of an osprey couple getting their uh, abode all ready. I love it. They are such amazing birds. Uh, Kathy Bolum shared this close up. Porcupines, their teeth are not the best, but <laughs> they are cute. Uh, their faces are so funny. Uh, she spotted this darling at Turnbull National Wildlife Refuge. Now, this is a sweet photo. Another sign of spring. Uh, Courtney Litwin spotted this great horned owl and its little chick that didn't come out for a long time. She had to watch closely and then peeked its head out. Now, Courtney and really all of our wildlife photographers do this, but I want to make sure to mention specifically, Courtney tells me she was a great distance from this tender scene with you know, those huge lenses that our wildlife photographers use. So they are not disturbing the wildlife. And speaking of those giant lenses, if you get too close to your subject, <laughs> you, that's what happened with Mark Vogt today. He says he was just sitting and observing a, a small herd of bighorn sheep, and they didn't seem to mind him and got awfully close, and he says that's all he could manage to get in his lens. Uh, so that is a, an extreme close-up. Uh, Mark was not injured in the making of that photo. Our forecast radar, we do have a fair amount of clouds that are going to be moving through on our Thursday. The bright blue skies of today will be a distant pass with just a few showers up along the Canadian border. And then as we get into Thursday night, we'll start to see some wet weather developing from the Palouse into the central panhandle. That is going to continue for Friday and may bring some very light rain Friday into Spokane and Coeur d'Alene, but the rainfall totals will be minimal. We're looking at hundreds of an inch in Spokane and Coeur d'Alene with some heavier precipitation further to the south and east. Overnight lows tonight with the clouds will be above freezing across the region. And despite the clouds, highs tomorrow will be running a little above average, will be in the 50s and 60s. Your seven-day forecasts, a weekend to look forward to. Make your plans, mid-60s and sunshine, and then windy conditions and the chance of showers returns for the start of the work week. Kirsten? Thank you, Chris. Well, most of us have training about what to do in case of an emergency, but does your child? Safety measures like a family fire plan can be life-saving. It's why the Spokane Fire Department was at Finch Elementary earlier teaching kids what to do in case of an emergency, and they did it inside their brand new fire safety house. Bronte Sarotsky explains how this upgrade is enhancing safety education. This emergency house upgrade means that more Spokane kids will know what to do in case of an emergency, keeping themselves and their families safe. You just leave it on like that? No. From learning how to put out a kitchen fire <laughs> to escaping a house fire through your front window. Gently lower myself down. And learning how to stop, drop, and roll. And roll back the other way. Good job. These Finch Elementary students are learning exactly what they should do in an emergency. Because I care about my family and I don't want anything to happen to them. These life saving tips were taught by Spokane firefighters who remember doing these exact exercises at this age. National studies show that second and third graders are some of the most instrumental times for kids to learn safety information and help to bring it home and create differences in their homes. This fire safety house exercise has been around since 1992 
And for a while, its age really showed. It was really just getting dilapidated to the point that it wasn't working well anymore. So the city used $250,000 worth of ARPA funds for this brand new one. With more modern day equipment like a smartphone instead of a landline to practice 911 calls. It's also now a one story building, making it more accessible for all kids. They learn about the most common residential fires that happen in the city of Spokane and things that can be easily done to stop those from starting. The biggest takeaway the fire department hopes these kids get from this exercise is to immediately know how to respond to an emergency. Smoke inhalation is one of the things that ends up killing most people in fires, so we really emphasize crawling low below the smoke. If this is something you and your family are interested in, you have time to get your kids this hands-on training. This mobile home will be going out to all schools within the Spokane Public School District over the next two years. Reporting in Spokane, Bronte Sarotsky, 4 News Now. It's actually really cool. An awesome resource. Yeah. All right, the Mariners were looking to snap a three-game losing streak today. Yeah, the, the bats finally woke up. It looks like there were some late-inning heroics as well. We have the highlights of this drama-filled game coming up next in sports. Stay with us. Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. So what do you think about these? We're going to take everything. From design and products to removal and installation, Rebath is with you through every step of your remodel. Call us or visit Rebath.com and save $1,500 off your complete bathroom remodel. Celebrate the 100th episode. I'm damned excited about it. With a family you've been part of for years. Your great uncle, Seamus. He got drunk and fell into a well, thereby proving that he's a Connor. The Connors, 100th episode, tonight on ABC. When your backyard is bursting with color and beauty, you're feeling more than pride. You've got the power of the flower from the plant farm. The power of the flower gives you creativity, inspiration, energy, and so much more. With the helping hand of the plant farm, life excites and your talent knows no boundaries. Bring home the power of the flower from the plant farm today. Because life is better in the garden. Going on right now for a limited time, get 1.9% financing for 72 months on select F-150s. Wendell Ford at the Y on North Division. Drive for generations. I'm worried about the draft. We got some bad zone control and I, I'm concerned we're not bringing the heat. Look at this, crossover's off. We've got a weak dribble. We need a solid block, just not enough pressure. What do you think? I think I'm doing just fine. What? Bill's Heating and AC is offering financing as low as 0% for five years. Call today. For all your heating and cooling needs, leave it to the real professionals at Bill's. Welcome to Moo Fitness. Let's go. these we're gonna take everything from design and products to removal and installation rebath is with you through every step of your remodel call us or visit rebath.com and save fifteen hundred dollars off your complete bathroom remodel for news now expect more on air online and on the app well, the Seattle Seahawks began their offseason program this week. They were given a head start over the rest of the league due to the coaching change from Pete Carroll to Mike McDonald. Sports director Julian Minnesota is in studio now with us. And Julian, are the guys adjusting to the new head man? Well, it's like when you get that new boss at work, right? You want to make a good first impression. And that's what the Seahawks are doing this week. It's the first time the players have been able to interact with McDonald outside of those initial phone calls or text messages. And there's a little bit of an adjustment period from the playbook to team chemistry. A lot has changed, and the players are trying to get up to speed. The Seahawks went from having the oldest coach in the league in Carroll to the youngest coach in the league in McDonald. And that can be quite the adjustment for the veteran players, some of whom are almost the same age as McDonald. I think the biggest thing that Mike was just talking to us about was visualizing, like being able to understand um, the type of dominant team that he wants us to be. Um, obviously, we got new coaches. From what I've seen so far, man, he's got a vision. He's got a plan. Uh, he already laid it out for us as a team. 
um, and, and it's our job uh, to help him and his job to help us. Now, McDonald will get to add some new players later this month. The NFL draft is approaching, and the Seahawks have seven picks this year, including the 16th overall pick. Now, this is a deep draft for quarterbacks, so we'll see if Seattle takes a young QB to learn behind Geno Smith. Many questioned if Smith is the long-term solution at quarterback, as he took a step back this past season after earning comeback player of the year two seasons ago. A former Washington Huskies coach, Ryan Grubb, is the Seahawks' new offensive coordinator. So maybe a little reunion is in the works with Huskies quarterback Michael Penix Jr., who is also a projected first-round pick. The NFL draft is set for April 25th, and you can watch it right here on KXLY. Heading into today, the Seattle Mariners had one of the worst offenses in all of baseball. It's been a problem for the Mariners during this three-game losing streak. Seattle was hoping to avoid a sweep against the Toronto Blue Jays this afternoon. And we picked things up in the seventh. Mariners lead 1-0, but not for long. Vladimir Guerrero Jr., just like his daddy, hits a long home run. And that ties the game. So we would go into extra innings, free baseball for the fans out there in Toronto. To the 10th, runner on second base for Cal Raleigh. And they call him Big Dumper for a reason. Raleigh dumps one into the seats into the outfield to give Seattle the lead. Now, second home run of the year there for Raleigh, and it came in a big spot. And the Mariners just kept pouring it on. Ty France hits this one all the way to the wall. No outfielder is going to get that one as another run comes across to score. As more Mariners, it's going to be Mitch Hanniger here on this next at bat. Mind you, this is the first time Seattle has scored more than five runs in a game this season, and the offense uh, needed 10 innings to do it, but better late than never, I guess. Mariners are back in the win column with the 6-1 uh, to one victory. Derek is happy, and they are back home this weekend for a uh, three-game series against the Cubbies, the Chicago Cubs, and that one uh, starts on Friday. So still early they're getting their season legs in but uh it's it's the early part of the season so you're not going to drop too far in the division race yet it's just two games back at texas and that division seems all jumbled right now it had been pretty worrisome though so it's nice <laughs> to see the bats heat up at least in the 10th inning there today yeah. all right julian thank you here's a look at abc's primetime lineup for this evening Live stream KXLY Plus on the 4 News Now app. Don't settle for the screen. See it in your space. At Floor Trader, you'll find more samples and more selection in one place. This weekend at Floor Trader, all of Cortex waterproof, kid proof, and pet proof flooring comes with free basic install. A spring tradition returns to the Spokane Fairgrounds April 12th, 13th, and 14th. The 8th Annual Spokane Speed and Custom Show is back and bigger than ever with over 400 vehicles. Four celebrities including Eric Estrada from television's TV show Chips and from American Graffiti meet Debbie and Toad. John Diagostino from Celebrity Customs will be hanging out at Washington State's largest all-indoor car show. Five different theme rooms and many club displays to come check out. SpokaneSpeedCustomShow.com and Facebook for more information. Get moving with Dan the Moving Man. You might know us as Dan the Piano Man, but times, they're a-changing. When it comes to piano moving, service, and storage, we're a local legend. And now we bring the same skills that built our reputation to every household move we make. Big moves, small moves, modern furniture, priceless heirlooms. For almost 50 years, our neighbors have trusted us with their treasures. We'll make your move easy and stress-free. Call today for a free estimate. Dan the Moving Man, 509-922-1085. We love our house, but lately we've been feeling a little cramped. So we talked to ICCU about a new home loan. The process was super quick, and we got a really great rate. We start house hunting tomorrow. Preferably something with a bigger garage. This year, make your home more energy efficient and beautiful with McVay Brothers Roofing, Siding, and Windows. Did you know McVay Brothers sells the popular Coeur d'Alene windows? And last year, the 6000 Window and Door Series won the prestigious Energy Star Efficiency Award. Well, right now when you purchase a 6000 Series window, we'll match your energy rebate up to $10 per square foot. Plus give you $500 off any roof you add to the job. At McVay Brothers, we're always working for you. Don't settle for the screen. See it in your space. At Floor Trader, you'll find more samples and more selection in one place. This weekend at Floor Trader, all of Cortex waterproof, kid proof, and pet proof flooring comes with free basic install. 
4 News Now is brought to you by UFCW Local 3000. Well, this is a fun way to say goodbye. Chris told us earlier that Osprey season is here, so we decided to check our Osprey cam in Coeur d'Alene, and we have a surprise to show you. Check it out. Yeah, these are not Osprey. <laughs> these are geese. Yeah, that's yeah, rude. They've taken over. Imposter. It's, that is rude. Um, they arrive earlier than Osprey, and they will take over an Osprey nest, and then the Osprey come back to their nest, and those geese are not going to go anywhere. So it's uh, a goose cam now. Now it's a goose cam. <laughs> Forever? At least temporarily. Yeah, now the osprey will have to go find another place. You think they're too nice to get the geese out of there? Yes. The geese are not nice. They are not nice. <laughs>